Well, welcome. And my name is Mike Blinder. And you are part of another ENP Report sponsored webinar brought to you by our hometown. I'm honored that you're joining us today. If anyone cares, I'm live in Tampa Bay, Florida, but with temperatures all over the place, we could be the coolest spot. I have no idea. But I have promised you, I think this webinar today is Oh, it's a bad joke. I'm going to be the coolest spot today as well. All right, let's get to work. First of all, some quick housekeeping. You are on Zoom like you really didn't know that. And since you're on, I'm in a little zany mood today, please forgive me. And since you're on Zoom, um, I am not using Zoom meeting. I'm, I'm sure most of you are using that today to connect with people and what have you. I'm using what's called Zoom webinar. You may not use that tool. That means I'm kind of in control of the audio and the video now. You can't just jump in and start speaking. And that would be weird since we've had 100 and over 120 people register for today's event. We're gonna use the chat at the bottom of the screen with your permission. There is a hands up thing, raise your hand, a Q and A and a chat. We'll all keep our eyes on the chat. So if you'll do me a favor, and if you have any questions whatsoever, comments, whatever you wanna do, make a comment to the panelists, make a comment to the group that's that's watching um, with your own thoughts, links or what have you. We wanna make this an open forum, but keep in mind, and I don't know why Zoom webinar does this, but it defaults to panelist first. And so that means if you try to speak to the entire group, you're only gonna be speaking to the three or four of us on the panel, just drop it down to panelists and attendees, would you please? And that way we can keep this as an open dialogue. Now, with that being said, let me bring in my group. I hope they didn't leave me. We've got Jim Rule, president and publisher of Acorn Newspaper Group. Jim, feel free to turn on your video and audio. Frank McCracken, president and publisher of the Chesterfield Observer. Frank, please join us and our host today, because um, we are sponsored by a company called Our Hometown Media. Matt Larson, you're a great friend of ENP. We appreciate all your support. And thank you for dressing up for us today, Matthew said sarcastically. I'm kidding. <laughs> and everybody can hear me. We're all set to get going. Um, we're going to be discussing a very important topic today, which I did not believe is possible, which is can we create digital paid subscribers with a free product? I mean, obviously, paid daily newspapers at least the, your, your audience in the, in the legacy phase were used to paying for content. So it might've been easier, but now in the digital sphere, can you get people to pay? And these two gentlemen are doing just that. So let's start with you, Jim, publisher of the Acorn newspapers. Can you tell us a little bit more first before we get into the actual platform you're using and how you're getting paid subscribers about your company, the size, the market and all that and more, Jim. Uh, okay, yeah, um, thank you for having me. Um, uh, we're based in Agoura Hills. We're on the uh, Ventura County, LA County uh, line here. We've got five different weekly newspapers that we pretty much run all independent of each other. There's some shared content, but primarily we try to um, target our different communities um, with the five papers, you know, separate editors, separate editorial staff, all that kind of stuff. Um, um, can I just ask circulation? I don't know if you got Oh, yeah, yeah. Between the five, we're at about 138,000. Okay. Um, so it's a you know, pretty good size print run. All right. all right. How about web traffic? Uh, any idea of unique visitors, page views, that kind of stuff that you can share with us? The... Um, well, you know, I probably should have uh, should have pulled all that up. Oh, I don't I know what the, I was just about to say. I have yeah, a feeling Matt. that Mr. Matt Larson, who is yeah. your CMS provider, the guy. Right. Who yeah, he's he's my guru on all of this stuff. I rely <laughs> on him heavily. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, well, how's, yeah, how's the market doing? Real quick on that, just I got some numbers. I got some graphs we can look at later because I I do think it's interesting uh, how traffic has. Uh, remain stable on the sites with the paywall. But uh, the Thousand Oaks Acorn uh, is the leader of the group and, and they're you know running between 150 and uh, almost 200,000 monthly page views. Um, and the other sites are you know on that uh, scale. Excellent. All five of them. Jim, are, I'm, let's, let's go to Frank now. Frank McCracken, your company is called the Chesterfield Observer. Chesterfield where, sir? Chesterfield, Virginia, just outside of suburban of Richmond. Okay, sir. A little bit more about the paper, how often you publish, how many copies, uh, a little bit more about the size and, and scope of your operation. 
Well, the paper's been around for 25 years. We're exclusively to the Chesterfield County here in the state of Virginia. Um, with the pandemic, we had to tone it back a little bit. So we're just under 60,000 now. And we um, deliver most of those through a, a, a circulation company that works exclusively for us. Okay, great. Size of the staff, if I may ask? Um, we got 11 full-time and two part-time. And then we have another you know, eight to 10 freelancers that help us out. All right, great. Matt, anything on their website you want to share? Yeah, definitely. Uh, page views is uh, averaging around uh, 80,000 uh, page views per month and around 40,000 unique visitors. This is a good time to introduce Matt Larson. Matt, you are the CEO of Our Hometown Media. We appreciate, of course, your support of ENP. And course. I should mention, Full disclosure, we're about to launch a new marketplace product that you'll be hosting for us to help the, the suppliers and the vendors and our partners get a little bit more traction from the ENP audience. But basically, your company provides newspapers of all shapes and sizes a content management system. Am I correct, sir? That's right. Yeah, we, we work with uh, all, all sizes of papers, exactly. But, um, you know, a lot of our customers are mom and pops. Uh, you know, they, they can't uh, deal with managing uh, updates on their system, uh, you know, just all the technical details, but also uh, Jim and Frank use our full service PDF extraction. So we don't just host the website and handle all the technical stuff there, but we actually help them produce the website on a weekly basis. All right, and once again, I'm watching some chat starting to happen. Everybody's just going to the panelists. Just drop it down so we can all watch any and all messaging you have. By the way, no extra credit, Matt. For having a copy of our latest edition of E and P yeah. over your right shoulder, <laughs> I did place that. Yeah, and, and thank you very much for that. We appreciate. It. Okay, so yep. let's go back to Jim Rule if we can. Jim, what the heck were you drinking? I'm just kidding, sir. When you decided you were to take your your website and lock it down to a paid subscription community because you were a free paper, uh, tell us your thinking on that, your thoughts, and when you made that decision, Jim. Okay, well, we went online back in the early 2000s. Okay, and it always drove me nuts because I was a print guy and it's like, ah, oh, man, now this friggin' internet, I got another <laughs> great big giant expense and how do I monetize it? Right. And, you know, for years, we've just been paying the piper thinking it will come, build it and it will come. Right. And, um, you know, the revenue was a giant, giant uphill battle. Um, finally, I said, you know what? Why are we giving this away online? I just don't get it. Now, I got so much kickback from my editorial staff because, you know, freedom of the press, free press, all this. And I'm like, this is, a, this is an extra, extra expense for us, so we've got to recoup our costs. Um, so finally, after probably working on all my editorial staff going, no, nah, we're, we're going to do it. It's just what we're going to do. And of course, they thought the sky was going to fall. Um, I said, we'll go with a soft paywall. And, you know, yeah, we might get some kickback, but let's see what happens. Um, so we finally did it. I think uh, on the, the first one, we figured when we first launched it, we figured we'd do something like four or five free stories before you hit the paywall. And we did get a lot of confusion. People thought we were going to go to a paid model with the print and all of that. And it was like, now oh. we had to re reassure our audience that now the print publication is still free. This is a value added, you know, online only subscription. And um, you know what? It, you know, you had to calm a few people down, but um Overall, they accepted it pretty well. Some people would even buy a subscription for the online just to support the free paper. That's how much they appreciate the paper. So, I mean, you know, in a lot of ways, it was kind of heartwarming. You know, it felt pretty good. Matt, you were you were the provider when they you put up that paywall for them, correct? That was your job. Right. Yes. Right. We launched that back in uh, fall of 2018. Yes. Uh, with the metered model with a metered model. Um, let me ask you a question. Um, it now is starting to make sense to me that if you explain that the website has more than the print product, no, the print product simply printing you the weekly news, but on the website, you have archives, you have sure. expanded content. I'm going to, did you, did you coach Jim to add a little bit more 
to the website. So it, like make sure that there was a flip version of the page. I mean, how did you right. make the website more fun? So someone could say, wow, this is not print. It's not right. the same thing. It's an extension of the brand that's legacy. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just reminding people of the archives, 24 hour access to any issue from anywhere in the world, you know, just these pointing out these things that have been a feature of the website for years was a big part of it. Um, I'm just going to quickly share my screen just so you can see um, his subscribe page. The way he set it up, I think is really nice. You know, um, just a, a few simple options, easy to understand, not too many things to choose from. You don't want 20 different subscription options. There's the paradox of choice that comes into play there. And he's just pointing out the benefits right here with each subscription, 24 hour online access, uh, automatically renews until canceled. And he's got these four straightforward options, 12 months, six month, one month and single issue. Where'd you come up with that pricing? Did you just kind of toss it against the wall, see what stuck? Or did you have some research from other markets? Why that pricing model? You see, because you have a free paper, you have nowhere to start in your brain, at least in my opinion. Yeah, correct. It was, you know, we, we all kind of kicked pricing back and forth. We wanted it to be affordable. And you're figuring, you know, it's like, oh, come on, 36 bucks a month? A year. Or, uh, a, a, a year. year. I mean, you know, yeah. that's, yeah. you know, it just seemed cheap enough. Yeah, we didn't want to go too cheap because it's like, you know, we, we feel that our content is worth something, but you know, it's, I don't know, I'll be honest with you. It's just, we kind of drew a line in the sand figuring what are people willing to pay? And that's what we did. And we figured we can always do uh, coupons if our price was too high, you know, uh, and we'll see how that works out. So we just, you know, we just threw the dart, that's the number and we stuck with it. Uh, and that's the same number you've had ever since you put up the uh, metered paywall, correct, Jim? You haven't correct. changed the pricing. All right. Yeah. Oh, and one thing I want to add too, uh, you know, one thing you know we want to make sure people knew is with the online access, you're getting it before you're getting the paper. So the real local news junkies are getting it the night before we hit the street, and that seemed pretty attractive as well. Well, now you're getting ahead of you because that's the next thing I was going to ask. Oh, okay. What is your, no, no, that's fine. I mean, I love when people anticipate me. It makes me feel, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> and you, sir, over your left shoulder have a dog that hasn't moved once during this entire interview. I hope it's not ill or anything. I just wanted to bring that to your attention. No, no, he's very well trained. I <laughs> was this is getting to be, now, okay, so what is your, pub, what is your theory on publishing a weekly newspaper online. And the reason I bring that up, we had a wonderful gentleman a couple episodes ago who moved from New York City out to you know, Big Bend, Texas. And he runs a weekly newspaper and he puts his content up weekly. He said, my market expects it to be weekly. That's how we update our website. Are you the same way or do you break news every day and, and just like kind of use the paper as, as the weekly place where it's all displayed? Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. We put a lot of breaking news up on, um, you know, different days of the week. Um, the anything that's, you know, really critical breaking news goes in front of the paywall uh, for the community because we feel that's important. Um, but a lot of stuff, you know, if we feel it's softer, we'll put a shortened version up online earlier and you know the full story will be in the paper and they'll have to wait for that so you know kind of teases and stuff as we go uh, we did have a question i i think you may have responded to it matt online i know you're chatting away but someone wanted to know did he have to pay extra for this or did, was it an outsourced paywall this was a service i'm, I'm giving you a little kudos here because you're the paying customer for this this was a service our hometown provides as other you know, CMSs do as well. So you, you can throw the switch for any free site, right? And put up a paywall oh, for them. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm sure most CMSs do this, um, but what we use is a, a WordPress CMS and we use a plugin called MemberPress. So if you're doing your own WordPress site, just Google MemberPress uh, and you can buy that plugin, but it comes with our platform. And you obviously then hook it up to Jim's either authorized.net account right. or whatever, Right. you know, way he transfers cash. And here comes the big question before we switch over to Frank. What happened when he went up? How many subscribers did he get? How much growth has he had? I mean, is it, is it, is it 
is it a lot of money? I mean, Jim, are you ready to retire with all the cash that's flowing in from your subscription model? Or well, do I don't know if I'm, I'm ready to retire, but I think as most small publishers uh, have figured out, you know, the days of, um, you know, big revenue streams coming in are kind of done. So now we're looking for revenue creeks. <laughs> and I can, and I consider this a, you know, a good solid revenue creek. <laughs> All right. Now, I, Jim, I haven't gone on Wikipedia, but you just made a definition there. You just said that a creek is smaller than a stream. And I might take issue with that <laughs> until I study the two different tributary. Never mind. Matt, what are the numbers as we go into? Well, okay. There you go. Look at it. I have a fun little thing here. I thought we could make this a little bit interactive. Um, I, I'm not going to, uh, give the actual dollar figures here, but I do think it's interesting to look at, at this moment, a snapshot, what we're looking at today um, on just the Thousand Oaks Acorn. Again, Jim's got four other sites that are doing this, but he's got almost a thousand active paid subscribers and they are falling into one of these categories, either the 12 month, uh, 12 month multi-site, in which case, uh, if they bought a subscription to another one of his sites, they get a discount on this one six month, one month, and then single issue sales. So here's the pie chart, okay? So let's see if we can get some guesses here in the chat. What is the highest um, selling subscription and what is the lowest? And, yeah, that's, and we'll that was, was gonna be my question. How yeah. is it breaking down? Because you have the colors, but we don't know which is which. Right, right. So I, where's that 84.5% falling? Is that a one monther? Is that a 12 monther? Because Look, we're all doing the same thing right now. We're going, okay, how much money is he making? If the average is $4 a month, this guy's getting $4,000 a month. That's, hey, Jim, no offense. That's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. You oh, no, put, absolutely. Yeah. Gonna, and it's better than a creek to me. If I have 4K <laughs> coming in, every, I mean, I call that a real, like, you know, maybe an estuary, if I may be so bold. All right. <laughs> uh, six months right. and one month, Wendy says, highest is six month. John, thank you for also telling me to fix my collar earlier. That was a private message, but I appreciate it. Highest is 12 month multi, lowest is single copy. Nietzsche, I love your name. One, say I one month, one month is the biggest. Anybody else want to guess before the drum roll, which right. I don't have ready? <laughs> lowest is single copy. All right, Matt, drum roll. Right. Da, 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 what okay. is it? And just to be clear that this is uh, what we're talking about here is number of subscribers at each subscription level, not the revenue. So, you know, they're paying the most for a 12 month subscription, right. but here it is. Um, 12 months is by far the biggest representation uh, of the members. Okay. So we have the most people of these thousand active paid subscribers um, at annual. So I think that's really fascinating. I mean, that's obviously the most committed group, you know, to buy a year at once. Um, and so it, it's been really neat to see this uh, shift over time. I think, yeah, M. Roberts got it. So yeah, 12 months right now at, at three months or almost three years in just a couple months short of three years since launching. This is where it's settled uh, almost 85% annual. And then the smallest is actually one month. So um, that has kind of been surprising to me, but in a way it makes sense because after three years, if you're still month to month subscribing, you know, that's not an economical way to buy anything, you know, because it's at a premium because it's the lowest commitment. So that uh, the fraction of people that are one month has slimmed down right in the middle. We got single issue sales. And then in uh, between that is the uh, 12 month and the six month. I'm I, I, first of all, we got to give a prize to M. Roberts. It'll be the guitar hanging on the wall behind. Yeah. No, M. Roberts, <laughs> if you want to text, you can you can privately text me. Um, or chat with me your address. I'll give you a full year subscription to our print product nice. editor and publisher, which I'm That's very cool. proud of. That's pretty darn cool. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I learned something today. By the way, Burl, a good friend of mine who was on one of these broadcasts earlier talking about cannabis in Lansing, Michigan, because he runs the Alternative Weekly there, is interested in the cost of your product. Let's not get into you like talking about your rates, but make sure you text oh. Earl, give Earl yeah, a message on that. Um, but this, this is really fast. And let's and Matt, will people be able to get the, your, these slides? Because I think this is really cool stuff. I'd like to also sure. share them. Um, yeah, what we're, we'll have a contact info at the end. Yep. Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm learning here is you get what you asked for. I mean, that was the first box they checked, correct? Go back to the, Matt, was the next image the actual? The, oh, yeah, the it actually year. is. Yeah. yeah. 
See, that's what I saw. I mean, the marketer in me said, if you had done, if you'd gone lowest to highest, they might have said, okay, we love you, but I'll give him the five because that's what he's asking for. Maybe, do you think, Matt, that's the reason or am I wrong? Does, does the first box usually become the, the, the highest box, option? You know, I th I really think that it's the economics of the way he's set it's it the up. Economics. It, okay. If, if they did five dollars a month for a year, that's sixty dollars. You know, they they might as well switch. And it's three years in now. Maybe some people did that for the first year, but then they realized I should switch to twelve months. I'm I'm going to s continue subscribing for another year. You know. So once they're totally sold on it, they switch. All right. People are asking, do you offer the flip book version of the paper behind mm -hmm. the paywall? And the answer, mm -hmm. Matt and Jim is yes, right? You don't get the yes, right. And do you have every previous copy available as well? Yes. That's all in the archives. And it's all, once you get a subscription, it's all access. Just very simple. We don't break it down and, you know, you get access to this for this price. And over here, it's like, you know, you're buying in and you get everything. Jim, I can tell him, uh, he said sarcastically, you're a huge operation, which means you, you employ five or eight digital only editors at your place, right? What I'm saying is, is there any, are you making any extra effort to throw more value in there sometimes? Do you sometimes throw in a, a video interview that maybe one of your reporters did or some extra uh, images that your shooters have shot? Is there anything that you're, you're dumping in there to prove that digital subscription from a paid newspaper has more, or is it just a natural flow from your audience? That this it, is it's primarily a natural flow. We do try to, like when we go on photo shoots at events, we try to put more of those photos back online. You know, we'll plug it in the paper. Oh, see more photos go online. Um, you know, some of that's kind of the, the low hanging fruit that's easiest for us to do. Um, you know, so we'll go in that direction. Occasionally, a couple of our editors are pretty savvy with uh, videos. So occasionally we do post videos up there. Um, we could certainly do a lot more. And, you know, <clears throat> it, it's something we're, we're looking to do as we go into the kind of quiet summer. Summers are kind of quiet for us. Um, you know, we'll powwow and see if we can up our game. See, I, I'm not finding it difficult at EMP. Now, then again, I'm a monthly B2B publication to do these. I mean, this is obviously a paid uh, sponsored webinar. Um, but some of you who know our platform know that I host personally the vodcasts each and every week. I'm finding that by augmenting the print story with interviews behind it, I'm having some fun. We're getting a huge audience on those. I mean, so I'm just wondering, get just a thought out there. See if you can, you know, get people to, I mean, when, you're, when your reporters are out there, you got a 5G, you got a phone, just stick it on a little stand and, and do the dialogue. I was just, it just it, that's just my two cents. And the more you throw in there, the more, ad, I, I, how should I say, all, amplification of the print product will come. Um, Tom had a question, curious to hear how many subscribers signed up, signed up within the first few couple months of the paywall. Has that number to continue to grow or is it leveled down? Matt, do you have any data on overtime? Yes, I can. Um, let me just bring up the screen one more time because I kind of did have a slide that talked about this. Yeah, let's get into that. I, we're doing this thing now. I think Acorn first. Frank, right. you're not off the hook. We're going to get to you in just a moment. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's a much younger paywall. So it's interesting to see where he's at today, too. Um, but the, in the first month, so Tom, this was an interesting model. I thought that Tim or Jim came up with um, 12 months for 19. 1999 uh, ran during the first month of the paywall. So in September 2018, uh, this was like their intro promotion, and that created 241 subscriptions, which is pretty much, I, I believe that's about 10% of the subscriptions that were ever created in the first uh, two and a half years. So that was a huge, you know, drive right up did you uh, how did you promote that did you have ads in the paper as well i mean was that something yeah we also had a front page story letting people know we were going to go. do this and you know telling them how fabulous it would be right yeah well i get it <laughs> <laughs> go ahead well while we're at it here i mean i just want to emphasize these promotions because these are some just like really practical things that anyone can apply uh pretty straightforward stuff like holiday offers um, Jim has this model of doing these kind of sporadic promotions throughout the year. And we're going to talk about Frank's model, which is just kind of like an ongoing introductory offer. So 
two slightly different approaches. I think both have benefits, but the holiday offer uh, was again for 12 months. And these promotions are only for the 12 month subscribers. And uh, this ran at the end of December, 2019. So over a year that the paywall had been up 30% discount if you buy in. And it was like, you know, a week at the end of the year that they offered this. And, you know, that was 27 subscriptions created there. Um, another quick thing, just while we're on this, the welcome back promo, uh, they did this. This is a, a cool thing that you can do where uh, basically we can target just the people that used to be subscribers. And we can say specifically, you know, we'd love to have you back. So it's more personalized. And the discount was 22%, ran for one week in February. We did it through a newsletter that was a targeted offer. And again, it just went to expired members. So you don't have paying subscribers getting these coupons uh, that, you know, we want to avoid that. And, um, you know, this is just a really quick way. And we were just talking uh, before the call today that, you know, we want to do something in the fall because uh, a lot of their coverage is on schools. Uh, so something in August, we're talking about doing another promotion along these lines. Um, and then just the last thing. Just that was my general, next question. How large is the email database? Yeah, right. I know you're all about the email, Mike, and I and love I, it. I'm very much about it. Yeah. I talk about it a lot with our customers because you know these are hot leads, people that sign up for a free newsletter. So uh, back in uh, the spring of 2020, uh, pretty much. Okay, so this was something that someone asked about earlier. With They mentioned taking the paywall down during COVID. Uh, the Acorn did not take the paywall down. They turned it into a registration wall, which I thought was really smart. And Frank did something similar when he launched because that just required, it's free access. It, he went from paid back to free during COVID, uh, but he required people to sign up with an email and just create a free account. And that takes two seconds, but it allows us to gather their email. And we collected uh, you know, 4,700 emails in that process. Uh, and I was digging into the data uh, at this time period. We were still selling annual subscriptions during this time period. So there was still an option to buy. And as Jim said earlier, that's a way for people to give back to the Acorn, uh, it, you know, in just kind of a unique way. Um, and then 236 members purchased their first paid subscription after the free account promotion. So it was because they had- That's great account. conversion. That is amazing. Right. That's yeah. the conversion. And then- on top of that, we talked about all these coupons, 137 of those people used a coupon after they did the free account to get their first paid transaction. So you, collected, very successful. you collected 4,700 plus emails in a market that size. That's, that's incredible. How much data do you ask uh, when, you're, mm. when you're collecting an email address? What's your number now, Matt, of questions? Right. Or or field. You know, it's, it's really, really simple. Uh, I think the newsletter sign up, well, we don't have the free account on here anymore, so I don't know exactly what it was, but I'm assuming it was no more than name. First name is good to get for a newsletter because then you can automatically insert that into the newsletter. If you're just sending out newsletters without a hello mic, then they're much more likely to go to spam. So you want to get first name, email, obviously, and that's really all that you need. Uh, that may have been all that we asked for. Okay. I, I don't, yeah, and we, then we, we, we kept it people. simple. Yeah, right. keep it short, simple. Yeah. All right. Let's um. Well, we're Jim. You're not out of this. I'm sure we're going to circle back to you in a moment. Uh, let's get over to Frank. Frank, you've been so loquacious and talking so much through this. We've. No, I'm kidding. Um. Let's let's get into Frank's model. Frank, when did your paywall go up? When did you decide to do this? We started a registration um, to, for people to sign up in September, and then kicked up the metered paywall in October of last year. All right. So during COVID. Okay, during COVID, you asked for registration to see the content for one month, and then you then started, then you put up, was that a metered paywall or a hard paywall, Matt? We give them three, um, three stories a, a month. Right. Three stories a month. Was that a good model in your, in your opinion during, because I know a lot of newspaper, I and mean, if there was something to do with the pandemic, did you keep that news outside the paywall, or did people have to pay to get to it, Frank? You had to, the only thing we kept out of the, outside or in front of the paywall were their special advertisement sections and then their legal notices. Okay, cool, cool. 
So Matt, what do you got for us in Chesterfield? What right, we- yeah, so this is uh, just my slide so that I don't forget any of the important points. Uh, the registration wall, uh, Frank already described, and that you know generated the email signups that are still on that newsletter list. They get a newsletter. Part of our process is when we extract the PDF and put the stories up, we automatically send a newsletter out. And we've been doing that for 20 years that we've been doing this uh, extraction process because you know, it's clear that, you know, people need that sort of old school push notification to bring uh, traffic into the site. And we clearly see in the statistics that it works. So, uh, you know, just that reminder uh, brings people in. And so these people signed up for a free, basically newsletter, and they're still getting that. And so we're marketing to them by delivering value every week, sending headlines and teasers. Uh, But it's basically like looking at the front page, they're not getting anything beyond the paywall. Um, and then they launched with this model. I really think this is clever to have two, just two options, real simple, not a lot of decisions to make here. And it's one year or monthly and uh, they both auto renew and he's got this introductory rate. So the first time you subscribe, you get the intro rate, which is $48 a year. That's going to auto renew at $72 a year. So, you know, we're going to see how that does in the fall, but right. know, really to maintain the revenue he's making now, he's only got to uh, have two thirds of those people auto renew, and I'm sure he's going to get more. So, uh, you know, with the price increase. So, and then the and uh, the month to month, he's got this, uh, you know, real low rate to get your foot in the door, 99 cents, and then it auto renews at 7.99 a month. So it's one month at 99 cents, the next right. month at 7.99. Right. All right. Um, do you have any? We don't know the conversion for the annuals. You should know some conversion on the monthlies. Do you have that data for us? I think I should, let's see, right on. Oh, you know what? Um, yeah, we can kind of look at these these slides. Uh, well, this is not really answering your question, but it is, I just want to point it out because uh, we talked about this with the acorn, just the split. So um, I kind of gave it away. We can't do the contest again, but um, <laughs> they've got about a quarter of them uh, since the launch, just looking at the total number of transactions at, for each subscription type, about a quarter have been monthly, okay? But that only adds up to 10% of the revenue over this period yeah, see, because that's... it's more expensive for annual. Right, exactly. So I just think it's interesting. And uh, the lesson that I take away from all this stuff, like Jim's numbers being 84% and Frank's 90 being these annual subscribers, that's your core audience. You know, those are the people that you want to tailor your website to. They're the true fans and they make up the majority of the subscribers and the revenue. So uh, I think rather than chasing everyone and treating every page view equally, you know, you should look at things a little bit differently based on who it's coming from. And right now, Frank's got 191 active paid subscribers with a split of about 10 to nine, uh, 10% being monthly. So again, very similar to the acorn, how they've settled out. Content uh, behind the paywall. Again, same or similar questions, if I may. Um, Frank, are you putting anything special behind it? Is there just just uh, same content that you always had there? I mean, we can let the, the news dictate what we, we put up there, if that makes some sense. You know, we can need to, to beat the, the local daily paper to something. Um, and we got the time to do it, then we'll throw it up there and give them a little extra stuff. Uh, we did do, um, during the um, pandemic, a lot of graduations couldn't happen. So we put a lot of photographs and stuff up there. To, Can't mess with that, that. That always got people going. It was like doing a cat video. <laughs> <laughs> well, or, or, or a dog video if you're talking to right. Jim, um, except it wouldn't, wouldn't have much motion in it. Um, let's go back to um, email database for Frank, Matt. What do we got? And uh, I don't, you don't have to bring up a slide on that unless you have one, but how large is his email database and how, right. how is that working for you? Right. Oh, I think I have those numbers here. Um, you know, I, I don't actually have them right in front of me, but I seem to recall looking at them. It, it's in the range of the acorn. It's I, I think around 4,000, something like that emails. And, um, you know, I want to say about three fourths of them came from this uh, free account sign up, you know, in the month before it was paid and they did a lot of great promotions. They wrote, you know, articles and published it on the website saying, this is why we're going to the paid model, explaining to people, letting them know it's going to happen. And, uh, you know, asking them to sign up for that free account ahead of time. 
And so again, they, they continue to market to this audience uh, with that newsletter every week. So I, I think it's in that range, um, around 4,000. Uh, I want to invite anybody who's participating as an attendee to go to chat and ask any questions, make any comments. Um, uh, make sure you do it to everyone if you can. Uh, Jim, you got a direct one um, from M. Roberts there to panel. No, that's to just to the panelists, but I'm going to read it out to the group if that's okay with M. Roberts. At the start of the pandemic, our owner, Will Fleet, reached out to the community and asked for their support in subscribing to the paper. We used to give it out for free. $59 would give subscribers the premium package, which was access to e-edition, delivery, and no longer available LA Times for Sunday. For 2020, we generated over 46,000 in revenue on subscriptions alone. Our email edition cost $39 by itself. Okay, no, your e-edition, I should say. So you're splitting, see, that's a, that's a different model. And I've heard that that's working for some, Matt, where the, mm -hmm. um, you know, the e-edition, or what some call it the, uh, the flip book edition of the paper is a different right. model for subscription. Um, right. Are you doing any of that in some of your markets now, or is it always uh, everything behind the wall? Right, right. Yeah, technically we can, and I think there may be one or two, and it makes sense. Uh, I, I can understand doing it because they see the print's audience as completely different from the digital, and they think, you know, if they like reading the, the print edition, they like seeing it laid out like a paper, they're going to just want the e-edition. But uh, the way, I mean, I kind of look at it is it's just like, why wouldn't you just give them everything? That's, I guess that's the question. Why not give them everything and just charge a little bit more rather than having two products that are a little bit cheaper? I, I just, these are just different options yep. for sure. I mean, why would you serve uh, 49 flavors of ice cream? I've been, I'm, <laughs> right. I might be so bold. We have a question from Preston, which I think is appropriate. Let's repeat again, Matt, which mm -hmm. I think everybody's worried about. What were the number, what were the uniques prior to the paywall and after, if I, uh, if, if sure. we can ask. Okay, yeah, I, I um, rattled them off earlier, but let's take a look at this chart. This is probably a good time to take a look at this because I thought it was helpful to visualize this a little bit. Um, we'll look at Chesterfield first. So this is a chart uh, the past uh, two years, uh, <coughs> since uh, July, 2019, and the paywall launched right here in October 2020. Uh, so looking at the end, I mean, you can just kind of look at this and see COVID right here, obviously, and all of our customers saw this huge spike in March and uh, the spring of 2020. Uh, but, you know, he's basically settled out right around uh, where he was averaging pre-COVID, and that's with the paywall in place. And some interesting stats on this, um, see okay so what i did is i looked at 2019 as the baseline and so we're around 82,000 page views 38,000 unique visitors right and then comparing each year to that baseline year because i i don't compare anything to 2020 it's totally an anomaly yeah, it's, it's an uh, yeah. you know 90,000 page views which is a 9.7 percent increase um so they they saw a significant increase in 2020 that's clear on the graph 23% increase in unique visitors. But in uh, 2021, compared to uh, 2019, and this should be expected, they did see a decline in page views, but the unique visitors are up. So that to me says that there's maybe less random traffic coming in. Uh, well, you know, they're not maybe looking at as many articles because they run out of, of the meter. Uh, but the dedicated audience, the people that are paying are actually looking at the site more and getting more out of it. So I think that's what really counts. Again, it's just working with that core audience because, uh, you know, those random people, they may add up to the page views, but that's, that's not really, I mean, you may get a couple more ad dollars from your ad network or something that month, but uh, that's not a long-term strategy. Yeah, but it could also be that anomaly of 2020. I mean, everybody's locked in. Right with a screen, I mean, either the yeah. tablet or the phone or the, right. you know, God forbid, or the TV, you know, but they're, they're just locked in on screens. Right. When the world opens up and you finally get your, you know, get out, uh, there just may be a little bit less traffic that the entire industry is going to see. Well, it's, it will just, 
take it as it comes and see where we go. But this is right. not a significant drop. So let me let me let's exactly. stay, keep that up for a second. Oh, I talk okay, to Frank. I'll show the acorn next. Yeah, because yeah. I want to talk to Frank about this. Now, yes. Frank, you know, I went out uh, I, and I still do it. I mean, Mike, I, I built 22 years um, of, of what we call revenue generation, where we did four-legged sales calls. We, we parachuted into markets all over the world. I mean, but just about every North American market, I went in there and helped sales reps and made calls, uh, these four-legged sales calls with potential advertisers selling multimedia solutions. When the paywall world started, we were getting pushback from advertisers. Why would I buy anything digital from you when people, you know, because they were pissed. This was, now this was years ago when people started putting up paywalls. Are you getting any pushback from your advertisers that they, that if you're selling anything digital on your website, are you hearing any complaints, Frank? Is anyone using that as an excuse not to buy an ad or sponsored content or anything on your website? No, I think most people kind of got it with the pandemic going on that, you know, just not only our industry, but a lot of industries revenue was down. And so you certainly had to find other alternatives of, of revenue coming in. Um, but we just point out to them that it, it's a, it's a, it's the, the people that are there actually are looking for more value. If that makes some sense, the, the customers more value to this ad. Um, and so it, it, they seem to buy into that. Okay. Um, while we're on the topic, it has very little to do with paywalls, but it's a big issue right now. The two biggest issues in the industry today, there used to be three, Matt, you know, when people were worried about third-party data going away. And as predicted, Google caved this, you know, today. We, we released that in the 12 new newsletter. They're putting it off another year, right? Before, and if no one knows what I'm talking about, Google made a decision to stop uh, allowing cookies in the um, Chrome environment. Matt, you're the nerd here, but I'm saying that correctly, right? Right, right. Yes. Yeah. And that, I mean, them and Apple, they're, they're both. Well, Apple memory. already did it, right? Google. Yeah, yeah. They've made that change with iOS updates. Yeah, yeah. But Google's like 70%, right? So when Google stops right. the cookies, that ends the programmatic world in the sense we call that third party data. The data you collect at your newspaper is first party data. People said, nah, they're not really going to do it. And people were wondering why they were doing it. Was it just to, because it, it would also hurt Facebook, correct, Matt? I mean, because Facebook's, right. Facebook's right. retargeting is a huge amount of revenue. As I would say, right. Right. that's good for us. You might be upset. Oh my God, there goes my programmatic revenue. There goes my chance to sell reach extension. But it's almost like they take that pawn off the, the board for you, but they take Facebook's queen off the board because <laughs> a lot of that money is yeah. is Facebook retargeting money, and they think they, they just put a they just put a, a dagger into that. But now it's another year off. But the, I don't know why I went into that diatribe. Please excuse me, Matt. It's your show today. But no the two things that all we hear about is reader revenue. That's what we're addressing well today. But also sponsored content, right? Branded content. Mm. Frank, are you doing that on your website? Do you sell uh, content you create for your advertisers or in your newspaper? No. Okay, so you, there's this church and state, right? There's the newsroom and then there's advertising. All right, Matt, is that it for the observer so far and the data you want to show as we're going yeah, through this? Let's go I over to the acorn then. On their stats for sure. Um, and let's keep in mind that both markets technically are suburban markets, wouldn't you say? Jim, you're, you're suburban LA, right? Correct. And, and then, and Frank suburban uh, Richmond, correct Frank? Richmond, right. Yeah. Okay, go well, ahead. Before we get into that, um, so, Burl was just asking about impact on digital ad revenue. Jim commented, no impact on digital ads. So you're talking about the ads that you sell directly to local advertisers. You've maintained that revenue. Right. And I mean, to be honest, it's not much. Right. So, That's what you're saying. You know, beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you're not doing things like, like at EMP, we sell a lot, we, we sell a lot of digital solutions that, that leverage our website. You're not making that a focus of your sales. You're just doing banner ads and print ads as you send your sales force out. Correct, Jim? Oh, well, correct. Yeah. I mean, still primarily, uh, you know, print rules our world, the print ads. Um, but we are, uh, we're going more with social media campaigns and selling some of that kind of stuff as well. Good for you. That's a separate thing. Yeah. Nice. Okay. That's nice. good for you. All right, so go ahead, uh, Matt. You were going to give us a little yeah. more data. Let's take a look at this. Uh, so here's your visual on the acorn, just the Thousand Oaks acorn, but the trends are very similar to the other papers. And we got the paywall launch right here this month, which actually was a very, you know, it was kind of a 
peak month. Uh, and they were just, you know, kind of hovering right around this for years. Uh, well, they had this, this uplift here, but, um, you know, that's, that's kind of, that was steady. And then, uh, you know, they kind of leveled out here, uh, less peaks and troughs, it seems like. And then there was COVID, but today we're definitely, you know, very solid uh, where we were wow. pre launch. Yeah, pre paywall. And it's kind of hard to see with all the ups and downs. So I just like to break it down like I did for Frank here. So in 2017, that's our baseline year, a, a full year before the paywall. Uh, the average monthly page view was uh, about 100,040 unique visitors. Uh, in 2018, it went up 38%. The first year of the paywall, the page views went up. Uh, unique visitors went up 42%. 2019, this is, so they launched it in September of 2018. So it was really third quarter of 2018. The first full year of the paywall, 2019, again, an increase over those pre-launch levels, uh, six, 7%, 18%. 2020, again, an anomaly, but the best year on the chart, 52%, 86% on unique visitors. Um, and then 2021, where we're at today, it's still up. So, you know, they're, they're doing great things there. And, uh, you know, it's not just, this isn't really a controlled study. They're doing a lot of different things to drive and, and increase traffic. But this is the end result is they're, they're not losing page views. All right, Jeff Payton who actually was an early bird. Jeff, you can ask any question you want because you sat with us for 30 minutes <laughs> watching us test the audio and all that. Jeff asked from Laconia, um, is the rise in uniques attributed to folks circumventing the metered well, clearing cash and et cetera? Matt, let's talk about that. People who figure out, they can, see me, a metered wall does allow a human being to constantly go up to their browser, right? Clear the cash, clear the cash, means means remove the cookie. Right. Well, most metered paywalls, but ours does no, not allow that. It's not uh, susceptible to the incognito mode because rather than putting a cookie on there when they view a story and then counting their cookies, we're requiring them to authenticate that they haven't viewed three stories. So if they clear their cache, then they're just going to, uh, you know, still have that metered countdown. There's it's the way that we've set it up. It's not the traditional way of just using cookies. I always so, make it a point at EMP when we host anything to make sure we speak normally, not too nerdy. So sure. let's repeat that again to someone who just, you know, because there's a lot of managers that let the, what that means is some people have figured out to go up there and clear their history of a browser right. Right. and some paywalls let you jump over them for a while because it's right. counting the number of times you've landed there. Your right. system has found a way not to let that happen. That's what exactly. Saying. Yeah. We're not using the cookie method. We have an alternative method. So when you clear the cookies, normally that would just make you look like a brand new person. They don't have any information on you, but with ours that we require that they authenticate that they have not viewed the three. And so it's just going to, it's basically going to shut you out right away. It's going to treat you as if you viewed the, the metered paywalls, if you try to use incognito. So incognito is basically just, um, a way you know, we're, we're not allowing that to uh, you know, be a way to clear the record. How, how, a good question for Preston again. Um, how do you do that authentication? How clunky is it? Does it, is it, is it like gonna make a reader go, I'm out of here, too much work? I mean, what's, it, what's the experience like when I authenticate? Well, so uh, the, authentic, well, the user experience, you're saying when they go into incognito, what's... No, he says, how do they perform that authentication? You said oh, well, they I have mean, to authenticate. That's our, that's our, that's kind of a, you know, proprietary okay. thing. So yeah, All I mean, right. that's something that we've developed for our paywall. Yeah, yeah. But the user experience is not affected by that authentication. Right. Once that's, they register, no, they register, right? The only effect on it is if they're trying to cheat the paywall and then they're just going to, you know, hit the, the meter every time. They're going to be at the end of the meter before they start. Now, Jim, once again, everybody has to register to see. Both of you guys, Jim and Frank, require registration, right? And then there's the, then there's the paywall behind after that. But 
that's that is it right it's register to see the content was the first mode then you slipped into the paid mode after that uh k k wallace i may have missed this answer the meter pay will say they can view three stories before paying do they get to see three stories per week or three stories no matter what that's a good question you can set the paywalls different ways right monthly weekly whatever matt right Oh, sure. Yeah, you can auto re right, right. You can reset that meter. Uh, and it's just a variable on our end, which is number of days. So number of days that pass for the meter to refresh and get those three stories. What's the average? What's the normal? Is it a monthly three a month? Or yeah, they're all? they're doing pretty much uh, the typical model, which is monthly, it auto populates and it's three a month, right? So like basically one article a week, because I like the idea of them being able to open that newsletter and view one story. Uh, but then if they try to view that second one, which is very common behavior, our, our exactly. stats show, yeah, it's like an average two actions per visit. So people, you know, unobstructed by the paywall, if they're paying, they will, you know, typically come in and view two articles at a time for each visit. And so this would shut that down, uh, you know, pretty quickly. All right, here's Preston's question. I'm, a, I'm gonna read it the way he wrote it. So there are now no anonymous users? Anonymous, right. So for, from the, uh, yeah, in terms of looking at the actual articles, right. I mean, we're, they're hitting the paywall. They're hitting so, the paywall. I mean, they're users, but they're, they can only view the teasers. All right, we got about eight minutes to go before we're gonna wrap this thing up again. We're watching the chat room in any way, shape, form, or size, any question. There's no such thing as too simple of a question on, on something like this. We've got people of all different levels of digital knowledge, but what we're discussing now is a very big issue. Can you make extra dollars as a free publication, an alternative weekly or a suburban weekly that is for decades, constantly given away free, that's your model, a free audience, a free audience, a free model. Can you then say, because we're online with more in-depth content, and we're giving you we're giving you um, a, the flipbook version plus the digital version. Can we charge for that content? And that's what this is all about. Jim, any advice you want to give those that are nervous about this and scared they're going to start losing readers and piss people off? Because you had you said you were nervous, and then you yeah. did it. Are you happy about the decision, especially with uh, well, this graph? Is amazing. I mean, you must be happy, sir. Oh yeah, no, I, I'm thrilled. I think. Um... You just have to, it's like, you have to trust your gut. And unfortunately, I had listened to maybe the fears of my editorial staff a little longer than I should have before launching this, to be honest with you. It, um, it's like anything new, any change. Yeah, there's going to be hiccups and you're going to have some issues and you just, uh, you know, fix them as you go. But um you know, we're looking, we're, we're pretty excited about the revenue we've had. We're on track this year to make more than we made last year. And uh, we're going to do some stuff to really make sure that happens. I think, um, you know, it's, it's the future. I don't know how long it's going to take to really get there, but we're, at least we've got our feet in the water and we're on the way. <laughs> how about you, Frank? Was there any, you did it much more recently, did it in the middle of the mm -hmm. pandemic. Um, and it, it worked for you as well. Your numbers are, you know, we're still at the, you're just at the beginning of your journey, but what right. advice would you give a publisher who's nervous or has an editor saying, no, 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 no. We're free, we'll always be free and free at last, excuse I mean, the pun. I mean, you, you, you're gonna get some pushback from a few people. I mean, that's a kind of a given anybody who has some change, but you know, digital is gonna be more and more a bigger part of our daily lives. So, you know, you can keep on fighting it or you can join it and get in. But Matt was very helpful in kind of holding her hand and walking us through the process. So he, he that was, it made it a whole lot smoother. So thanks. I appreciate that, Frank, but I got to hand it to Jim too, really, because he was one of the I first. I already cashed the check. <laughs> and the, yeah, he was, I know you guys talk to each other and that's something that we really try to encourage at our hometown. We, <clears> you know, we're like a family of publishers. When you join our hometown, you join a neighborhood of publishers. We're talking all the time. You know, we send out newsletters every week with case studies showing what other publishers are doing so they can all learn from each other. It's kind of like a press association uh, from your website provider. So uh, I know that their editors talked about the strategy and uh, it impacted what we eventually did at um, Chesterfield. 
Joe G, good yeah, question. Perfect. Matt, do you I, I'm not, do you provide apps for your customers as well? Yeah, and, we yes. And do is there is there ever a separate pricing model for the app versus right. the the you know the um the browser based that's, version? That is that's interesting. Yeah, I can almost see separating that uh, into two different paywalls so you can just buy the app. But uh, the way our system works is they're automatically integrated. So yes, we do iOS and Android apps and they, uh, you know, they're synced up with the website. So you publish an article on the website, it automatically appears on the app. It's just uh, basically a native form of the website on the phone and uh, the paywall is integrated. So they can buy a subscription on either platform. Uh, they can, you know, we, we try to push them to buy it on the, the website because if you buy it through the app, Apple takes a significant cut of that revenue. So if you can buy it through the website and then just sign in through the app, that's better. Um, so yeah, well, it's, it's pretty much one paywall. It, it, I, I actually think that's a very interesting conundrum because the app is a completely separate, different yeah. type of audience and a different yeah. type of delivery. Burl is asking the billion dollar question. My buddy Burl, I've known for years up in Lansing, Michigan. The, um, the paper is an alternative weekly. He is doing what I call the guilt, uh, the guilt model of revenue, where basically you simply say, hey, this newsroom costs money. We're your voice in the community. Nothing wrong with that. Please contribute and help us out. And right. Bur Burl said, look, I'm making the same dollars doing that the way you're doing this. Do you, can I do both or can I turn those people into subscribers? I don't know if we have an answer for him on that yet, do we, Matt? I, I mean, what's your, why don't you just give me your gut on that? I guess I'm not quite following what, what he, he's asked, using this question. I just put out our hand. Yeah, yeah right, right. And he might be exceeding revenue. Mm. When he, I think Burl, I know, I know you and know how you chat. He's saying he's doing the please contribute and support our newsroom model. Oh, oh, okay. Right. Donation. Yeah. It's not a tax yeah. deduction, but you make it sound like one. Give, right. give, give. Okay. So go yeah. ahead. Yeah. I mean, definitely on the acorn uh, we've had the donation option for a while. I think I'm still sharing my screen so you can donate it definitely doesn't hurt to put it out there, but uh, you know that's that's going to be a different level of a creek. No, no, put that back up. I love that. Don't find a cow to tip. The tip acorn. a squirrel. Yeah. Oh, yes. that is creative. Yeah. That's the fun. Squirrel mascot is big with the acorn, and we had a squirrel coupon discount that did very well. Uh, they, they play up that really well. Um, but yeah, I think. Definitely makes sense to offer that, Burl. Like, again, he said that people want to contribute to the paper. And, you know, how else can they help sustain the business of a local newspaper? They can buy classified ads. They could buy other types of ads. Right. But, you know, donations and subscriptions are, I think, a, a much better, well, not better, but you want to have that option as well. So I think to do both, Burl, would be... Mark, would be Mark's asking a really cool question about... Yeah. And, I, and I, I've heard this before. Why not leave the e-reader, at least the current e-reader version, right. out? So you right. can say to the advertiser, my digital ad, your ad in the paper is instantly digitized. And right. available. Do you have a cool system like I do where my flipbook version automatically finds hyperlinks in the, in the copy mat and turns them into links for email and websites and stuff? So uh, if, yes. We so, do that. Yeah. So it's an interactive -y edition. Right. Right. So, so what's wrong with that concept? And then as soon as that, right. it, it, but only leave one out at a time, if you follow my logic, the current right. one, and then you put that behind the paywall as part of an archival system, but go ahead. I'm sorry. You're about to show us something, Matt. As sorry, we only have yeah. two minutes I'm left. Go ahead. Browsing here. Yeah. Um, well, Mark, I think the problem with that is, it's it, it's um, leakier than you probably want because once they get into the e edition they can read the whole thing, so it's not really controlling. Uh, it's not a meter anymore. Um, but I think what I would suggest for that to get the the print advertisers on digital is to use our hometown's PDF extraction tool because we will just extract those ads and run them on the right column, so they're separate from the e edition. The e edition can still be behind the paywall but we'll put the, the ads on the homepage like this and we can make them click through to the website. Like part of our extraction process is to identify any uh, phone numbers and uh, right. emails or URLs and then automatically link them through. So um, 
And then I when you do that, I've seen these models before. My advice, if I don't mind, can I give some advice, Matt, if that's okay? Please. And you, 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 you work with your design team to make sure you don't shove an entire menu from a Chinese restaurant in a one by one, you know what I mean? With right. a, you, you work with them so that the, the flow of the ad looks good in the conversion and everybody wins from that. We're gonna wrap it up here now. We only got one minute left. 60 minutes is all you paid for, Matt. The, the meter, I'm kidding, the meter's running. <laughs> the meter's this has been an amazing eye-opening um, dialogue. Matt, if people want Thanks more for. information, do you have a sure. place they can go to learn more about this? Yes. Can they get copies of your slides? Go ahead. We're, yeah, what, what, absolutely. I'll just drop our homepage there, ourhometown.com. And I definitely want to open it up to anyone that's interested in really the best way to learn about our platform is just to uh, get a, a free prototype. We do rapid prototyping. You just send us your PDF exactly the way Jim and Frank do every week and we will extract the articles into HTML and give you a fully functional website that we could launch in a matter of days. We've launched sites in four days, uh, you know, that people that really needed a solution. So go to con the contact us link there and just uh, send us a PDF through WeTransfer and we'll turn it into a, a prototype and then we'll give you a demo and explain, uh, you know, how we could help. Uh, the other advantage hosting. that Match system has, not that I'm, you know, prefer one over the other, um, is that you use a WordPress platform. So there's right. tons and tons and tons of plugins being developed almost hourly in your environment. Right. So if you don't have the solution someone needs, there's always a way to find one. I mean, exactly. maybe, and 19 different colors and stripes. That's why I like the right. WordPress environment. It's also right. very safe, right? You're, right. you're on some well, of the... Go ahead. I mean, the, it's a, an open source CMS. So yeah, it's, it's safe, but it's, it can be, if you're doing it yourself, it can be a little bit unstable because there's plugin updates being released all the time, different developers, you know, thousands of people develop plugins for WordPress and they might re release updates at different times. It could break other plugins. So that's why we have this dedicated engineering team managing those updates for you. So exactly. you get the benefit of the open source without, you know, uh, the issues that sometimes come. From. You know, if you're going to do WordPress on your own, you're going to have to have a full-time person handling yeah, it. I, exactly. I always say that there's nothing wrong with doing it on your own, but have a, have a, you're paying someone to do it. Jim, if someone wants to get a hold of you, what is your email address, sir? It is J-R, just like my initials, at the acorn online or theacorn.com. Theacorn.com, J-R, at theacorn.com. Mr. McCracken, I misspelled your name a few times. That's okay. Is it misspelled now on the screen? Isn't there another C in there? No, there isn't. No, wait, so. yeah, yeah, there's just another C in there. That's okay. All right, go ahead. What is it your still sounds email? the same? What is your email address? <laughs> um, it's publisher at localnewsllc.com. Publisher at localnewsllc.com. Matt, Frank, Jim, thanks so much for your valuable time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank Goodbye. you for attending this webinar. We've got some coming every two weeks. I think we've got this sold out right until the fall as you'll learn different solutions from what we like to call our partners at editor and publisher. And thank you again, Matt, for your support of our magazine. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. You're doing wonderful things for the industry. Thank you so much. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for the mic. Appreciate the time, Jim and Frank. Take care, Thank Matt. You. <laughs> See you later. All right.